Kia ora, welcome back. This final video is especially for you facilitators who want to share your mental health experience with Conversations for Change participants. For some of you, you will have been open about your mental distress in some settings. Like us. And others will have kept this pretty quiet. Sharing your own experience can be a powerful anti-stigma tool. If you would like to let participants know that like us, you're part of the 46% who have experienced mental distress, then you're welcome to share a little of this as part of the Conversations for Change resource. There are two big considerations, however. One, are you disclosing in a way that feels okay for you? And two, are you disclosing in a way that actually helps counter stigma and discrimination instead of accidentally increasing it? That second point is really interesting, that someone sharing their story to decrease stigma could actually end up increasing it. Yeah, I think sometimes people have an understandable need to share some of the dark and painful parts of their story, the parts that get hidden and shamed. And sometimes these are the bits that others are really curious about. But these stories are sometimes shared in a way that confirms fears and stigmas, that mental illness is scary, hopeless and not easily understood or that people who have experience of mental illness are unreliable or have poor judgement. So how do we make sure that whatever we share helps challenge stigma and discrimination? Well, researchers indicated there are particular conditions for sharing your story which are most likely to result in positive change. Let's have a look at them. When sharing their experience to counter stigma and discrimination, people with mental illness must have equal status with the target audience, e.g. as educators, and be skilled as educators or facilitators. These first two are pretty easy. If you're going to run Conversations for Change, we're assuming you've got some skill as a facilitator. It's more difficult with the second part that you're reflective of your target audience. However, if you have the option to use different facilitators, someone of Christian faith, if it's a church youth group, someone of Pacifica background, if that's your audience, well, this will make any lived experience they share much more powerful in terms of challenging stigma. The next few points are about the kind of story that is shared. When sharing their experience to counter stigma and discrimination, people with mental illness must be in recovery, have stories of challenge and positive recovery, and be credible and inspiring. You may already naturally share your story in this way. Yeah, basically these points are saying the way to use your experience to counter stigma and discrimination is when you're in a pretty good place and when you talk about some hard stuff but also some of the great stuff that can come from facing personal challenges. One tip to help increase the impact of your sharing is to hold off until the participants have got to know you as a solid, competent facilitator. I think when we're talking about young people, the idea less is more is also important. Sometimes I will just say, I had a tough time and I was in the mental health system as a young person. I love that line. It shares information, but doesn't leave you too exposed. Because although you may hold things that a young person tells you in confidence, they may not do the same. Mm, they might tell friends, family, talk about it online, and you need to make sure you're okay with the information being generally available. In addition, if you share stories with heavy stuff, young people may worry about whether you're okay and feel that they can't open up to you because you might be fragile. So remember, less is more. Are you comfortable with this information being widely known? And importantly, also think about have you got support? Support is important because sharing can leave us feeling vulnerable. We suggest that you talk through with your supporters what you think you'll share and debrief afterward about how things went. You could even do a, a practice run. I guess one last thing I would say is don't feel like you have to disclose. While there's research that says this kind of disclosure is helpful, it's okay to keep your private stuff private. Absolutely. And we have conversations for change because there is mental health stigma and discrimination out there. And we want to create a world where all of us can be more open about this part of our lives. You will know when the time to share is right for you. So thank you from us for even considering sharing your experience and for helping share these messages. Ka kite. Look after yourselves and go well. <laughs>